Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we continue with our project to fix a guppy line that produces a solid white color trait. We now begin our first back cross using the female offspring from cross number 3. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. My first goal on this channel is to try and fix a guppy color trait by starting with only 5 guppies. My starting group of guppies consisted of a solid white male we named Gandalf. He carries the physical trait we are trying to fix. So far, we crossed him with four different individual females that do not have any white color. If you have not seen those initial crosses yet, I recommend checking them out because they pave the way for the next set of crosses I have planned. Cross 3 will be the most relevant for this video. Cross 3 involved a blonde based female guppy that resulted in all blonde based offspring. When the offspring were still young, I carefully separated the males from the females. In this way, I kept the females virgin before continuing with my next cross. So, for those that are unfamiliar, guppies do not spawn like typical fish. They give birth to live young about 20 to 30 days after breeding. Female guppies also have a unique ability to store sperm. They can then give birth to live young like clockwork, even if there is no male present for months. This poses a problem if we want to selectively breed guppies when they are not virgin to begin with. If a female has bred with another male, there is always a chance or percentage that some of her offspring will be fathered by the previous males and not the one we are selecting. Making sense of the resulting offspring would be impossible, and that is why I try to separate the males from the females from every brood. The offspring from cross 3 did not show any of the white color that Gandalf had. This was expected, and we can now prepare for our next cross. This will be cross number 5. To fix the white phenotype that Gandalf has while still sticking with just the guppies we have available, we will back cross some of the virgin females from cross 3 to Gandalf. Because both parents will be blonde based, we should again expect that all the offspring will be blonde based. I chose 6 of the healthiest females and placed one every day into the same tank as Gandalf until all 6 were added. I added a lot of females because I wanted to have the highest chance that we would begin seeing some white colored offspring. I also added virgin females from cross 1 and they are the gray bodied guppies here. We will talk about these crosses in the next video. Gandalf and cross 3 females were together for just under a month before they started dropping fry. Fry drops were spread out which was expected because they all bred at different times. I kept an eye on the females and managed to collect a second brood of fry from them. What you see here are all the different aged fry with the oldest close to about 3 months. As you can imagine I have not counted them all yet. They are also all blonde based as we predicted. I already separated some of the males into a different tank and they are beginning to show some color. This is what they look like today. A good portion of them are showing some red coloration similar to their uncles. Another portion has the white phenotype that we are after, and this is great news. We just took a major step towards achieving our goal. It might be a little too early to celebrate, but they do look very promising. There are some guppies that are showing some bits of yellow and I'm curious to see if that changes to either red or white. It might just stay yellow too. I am hesitant to make any genetic conclusions to this cross yet. It is still early and there are a lot of fry that will begin showing color soon. Best case scenario, we will only have these two phenotypes, but I have a feeling this won't be the case. One thing I want to note is that even though all these guppies are blonde based, there are some that are much lighter than the rest, uh, less yellow if you will. It is hard to see through video, but hopefully this side by side might show some of the difference I'm talking about. I am wondering if this is one of the Lao genes, and I'm also hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Alan Bias lists three different Blau genes in his reference table and they all modify reds and yellows to some degree. He describes European Blau as the following. 
homozygous removal of red and yellow in body, reduced red present in finnage, ectopic melanophores removed, basal melanophores removed, snakeskin pattern degrades, reflection reduced. The lettering here corresponds to the genetic notation for the gene which is recessive and the different combinations you can get. This is an autosomal gene and therefore not sex linked. Ectopic means out of place and melanophores are responsible for black pigments. So I think this part means that randomly located black spots should be gone. Basal melanophores reduced would produce a lighter colored guppy. This might be what we are seeing. My remaining confusion is the picture still showing a guppy with a black spot, so I might be misinterpreting that section. The next blau gene is the Asian blau, and described as the following. Heterozygous suppression of erythrophores, red. Homozygous suppression xanthoerythrophores, yellow-red. Finnage reduction. Two distinct melanophore modification in heterozygous versus homozygous. Parts of this still confuse me, but this is also listed as autosomal dominant. Meaning, if a guppy has just one copy of this gene, we would see some of its effects. Namely, the suppression of the red pigment. So let's do a quick Punnett square with cross 3. Let's assume that Gandalf is homozygous for this gene. So both alleles are dominant and represented by capital letters. And let's assume female 3 does not carry this gene and represented by both lowercase letters. The predicted results indicate that we would have 100% of the offspring showing a heterozygous Asian blau phenotype, and therefore red would be suppressed in all the offspring. But we know that that was not the case because all the offspring had quite a bit of red. Even if we assume Gandalf was heterozygous for this trait, we still should have noticed some fish with a suppression of red. Regardless of what combination we assume the parents may have for Asian blau, none reproduce the results we saw for cross 3 except if they both don't have the gene. So Asian blau is not at play here. The last blau gene is hell blau. Awesome name. And Alan describes it as homozygous removal of red color pigment, partial removal of yellow. Unlike Asian and European blau, snakeskin pattern does not degrade reflective qualities increase. This gene is also autosomal recessive, so our scenario can fall under one of either European or hell blau. I'm leaning towards European blau because it removes more of the yellow than hell blau. Because both genes are autosomal recessive, we can treat these in a similar way for a Punnett square analysis. I will use the lowercase letter r to represent the recessive trait. Let's assume that Gandalf has this trait and is homozygous for it, meaning both alleles are lowercase r, and female 3 does not, so both capital. Cross 3 offspring should therefore all be heterozygous for this trait. This has little to no effect on the red color. A Punnett square with these resultant females with Gandalf gives us a 50-50 split for guppies that should have a reduced red color and it does seem like this is what we are seeing. We will check back on this over time. There is a chance I could be completely wrong and a different gene is responsible. But in any case, we have a good idea that it should be a recessive gene. I also believe that there are other genes at play here such as magenta and metallicus. If that is the case, we should start seeing additional phenotypes in cross 5 in addition to just the red and white so far. I will dive deeper and look at what the predicted offspring would look like with two or more genes involved. But it is too early to make these conclusions. We will circle back to this cross once more of the fry start coloring up and maturing. But one thing is certain, understanding what is going on is becoming more complicated as new genes are introduced. In the next videos, I will be back crossing each of the females we obtained from our four initial crosses with Gandalf. We already saw some of the females from cross 1 with Gandalf earlier. I will be discussing these crosses in the next video. Stay tuned. I split these into two different crosses numbered 6 and 7 because, if you remember, I had females with two different phenotypes. I'll see you next time.